Hello Internet, hello world of I'm Jackie Fox, and I want to provide a little bit of an update on my thoughts on this current TOR and kind of the TOR rewards. After getting a lot of comments, I realized that I may have made a couple mistakes in my hot take video. Um, first and foremost, the one that I think is most important to acknowledge is the fact that uh, maybe the energy was a little too chaotic for that video. There were definitely times where I was being hyperbolic, and I'm not sure how well that, like, tracked, like, how well people understood it, or if people just thought I was being angry and mean, which is really the way it probably feels, and I don't blame you if you have that, uh, that feeling coming away from it. That was probably a mistake. Uh, my comment sections have been really, really quite nice and polite, and even when there's a disagreement, it ends up being just, just pleasant. Um, and this felt a little less than that. Now, it's the same people. They're the same good folks that comment on other stuff. It's not like a whole new skew of assholes or people who were great before that have suddenly turned into evil... Uh, commenters, and it really wasn't that bad. I'm just saying that I have kind of a, a standard, and I like I like that it is a nice, polite, kind, and welcoming community so far, and you know, I, I am the person who sets that standard through the content that I make, and I kind of got to see how that can directly affect that, so that was a little bit worrisome. A lot of the things, a lot of the feelings that I had about uh, the Moogle cloak, though, I do stand by. There are two, th there, there is one outright error, though, for sure, and that is that this is certainly uh, probably one of the better pieces of armor that you can put on Sephiroth, especially one of the better non-TMR armors that you can put on Sephiroth. And, you know, largely that's because of the elemental resistance. It's also because, um, I think in my video I said the Brigandine exists, and I think I would rather have something that, instead of being scattered and providing a whole lot of different things that don't really all go in the same direction, but go in multiple different directions that I might want to go with Sephiroth, um, I would rather have something that was more targeted, like the Brigandine, or the Alexandrite Ring, or things like that, that do similar things to this, or Orange Shade. Uh, just going to another TOR reward that I really like. These are all things that I feel that I would generally rather have on Sephiroth than this, and I happen to own most of these things for the account that I have a Sephiroth for. I also have the feeling that we probably have a raid revival coming up that will give us access to those things. The thing is that, um, and, and for, let's say we have 200 characters in game, for 99% of characters out there, there still is not a cloth armor that provides AoE resistance. But for Yuffie and Sephiroth, there is, and that's going to be the Moogle Cloak. I still don't think that this is a good piece of equipment for Yuffie. I think it's still really bad for her, because all of the other things that this does, like, if you're using her card, you don't, there's, there's really no reason to run this. And let's talk about, like, building for a specific character's defense, because this isn't always the way to go, but this is the way that I think about it, and this will factor into why I'm still not a big fan of the Moogle Cloak, even though I have to admit it is arguably a good piece of armor on Sephiroth. The, the other thing that I would like to say is that I said several times it's very difficult to get, and that's not necessarily true. Like, in term, there, there is definitely, and, and the, specifically the, uh, the types of PvE that I was talking about getting equipment from instead is actually a little bit more of a grind for you. Um, in that you can do this all through background, you can auto-farm the boss fights... Um, while you're doing that background repeat, you know, so you can do this really efficiently. The thing is, it's going to burn through your, your pots, and we're getting enough of those energy restore pots, so that's not a big deal. I've been pretty much burning 25 of those a day without seeing uh, any sign of getting below, like, I don't know, 250 for any account that I have, and I would say I've been doing that for months, so... So that's not really the issue. The issue is that I have to stop farming other things for a week to get this. And there are definitely going to be players that are like stocked and they have nothing better to do this week. And maybe they've already gone through like the, uh, the collaboration shops and gotten all the metal rewards and over farmed all of the collaboration events for metals and stuff like that. And have a stockpile of those metals to go until the, the shops run out, which is going to be at least an extra week beyond... Um, 
when you can collect those things so you want to be able to build up enough of those potentially that you can still buy the daily items which you know depending on how many of those you want and how if you want to buy all of them every day you want to have a certain amount of those metals left i mean i'm just saying my point here is that there are a lot of other things you could be farming instead and if you have no priorities at all in that respect then there's probably nothing that i could say to keep you from getting the moogle cloak just for fomo and that's kind of what i was expecting i was really aiming that video towards people who are kind of wondering if they should and if you're wondering if you should if you are uh, in the market to be influenced by a video about this if you have not already determined that this is the best thing for you it, it's my opinion it's not that great now again it is arguably decent on sephiroth but i really think that one of the one of the bigger issues that i have here is you know really the one that i brought up first and the fact that all of these trials of reckoning like in my trials of reckoning video when i was actually fighting the boss every Every unit on my team is not wearing uh, non-TMR armor. If they're wearing an armor, it's a TMR armor, and likely they aren't. Um, they probably aren't wearing any armor at all, because I'm not worried about any of these mobs or bosses doing damage to me. It's never a problem in this type of PvE content, unless I'm trying to solo it, and then in, in which case it might become a problem. But in most cases, I want the most offensive possible gear, and all of it, all across the board as I can, and typically speaking... That has often been, especially if we're facing human opponents, that has often been the Trials of Reckoning gear. I mean, we've got Prompto's Wristband that gives you uh, Maneater on physical attacks. We've got Terra's Ribbon, which gives you Maneater on magical attacks. So those are good if you're fighting men. You've got the Shinra Bangle, which just absolutely cranks up critical damage and rate. You've got things like Orange Shades, which gives you crit acquired, a uh, acquired AP up which is equal as an accessory to the Moogle Cloak, to the, the modifier on the Moogle Cloak that everybody gets. Which, you know, arguably, if you if you want a piece of equipment like that, that has that, um, it, it's, it's not a great defensive piece of equipment in any respect um, for people who aren't Sephiroth. But... It does have acquired AP up. If you don't have orange shades, then that's one way of getting that. But orange shades provides that with accuracy and, I believe, uh, critical up as well. So that's a really good item. And it's just like all of these specific ones haven't been something that I could just throw on any party because they're only really good on the characters from their collaboration. And that's just a shame because I love the idea of building out a diverse group of uh, equipment that I can... I can equipped versatilely across hundreds of characters or maybe not hundreds of characters but dozens at least and it really just kind of sticks in my craw that this only basically works for one character and even then i'm still not sure it's the one that i want to use like i feel like everybody's saying it's best in slot but i feel like that works on paper because like really if you're building a sephiroth to lean more towards the tanky side of things towards the thick boy side of things i don't think defense is the way that you go like i just don't think that defense really factors into that equation and a big part of that is because uh you know defense matters when you have a lot of it when you don't have much you might as well not have any at all especially with the way that the modern meta works like sure it will reduce physical damage a little bit but so many people have defense penetration that you either have to get your defense really high or uh, look i'm just saying that having a very small amount of defense is standard now it's not going to save sephiroth's life the thing the thing that's really helping him is the combination of the five percent elemental resist which i think is huge um, for him specifically, because he comes in with such a great starting point for building for any elemental resistance you want, including light, because Dark has the vision cards for it. But there's all sorts of other ways that you could go with potential rainbow teams that don't really have a lot of synergies, honestly, but at the same time could be built very specifically into kind of a Rube, Rube Goldberg configuration that would make Sephiroth almost indestructible, at least for a certain amount of terms, versus a specific element or a specific series of elements, because a lot of the units that have these buffs, it hits three different elements. Um, so like, uh, for it, well, actually I don't remember which three elements any of these really do, but you know, for instance, like Charlotte, Sakura, a lot of characters have buffs like these. Um, and I think that that's really interesting. And I think that if you're trying to mitigate damage on Sephiroth, that is probably the most efficient way to go about it. 
Uh, the second most efficient way, I think, is going to be attack type resistances, maybe not specifically slash, because a lot of the higher damage dealing slash units have slash attack resistance penetration now. So maybe you want to look into some of his other resistances that don't have high penetrations and build him up for those, kind of more the way that you would a Whisper. But really, I don't think that your main priority should be building Sephiroth for a defensive build anyways, because so what if he survives one more hit? If he can't one-shot large groups of people or come close to that or be able to help finish somebody off or be able to hit someone with telluric fury um, and just break their fucking life uh, or be able to crowd kill with his uh, limit burst effectively, is are you really playing Sephiroth to his full potential? Like, isn't Sephiroth a character that would prefer more accuracy so that his damage, as devastating as it is, is more constantly going through against even some of the evasion meta? And then maybe maybe you all to and, and the, the Alexandrite Ring does a good job of doing both of these things. It provides the same elemental resistances as the Moogle Cloak, but also make sure that his damage goes through to such a degree that you might even have a chance at hitting Yuffie if the rest of your build is kind of sufficient to support your dexterity, etc etc. and various forms of accuracy. So, um, you know, that is more interesting to me because I can see a situation where it doesn't matter if I can take one more hit. If I if if I am going between being able to hit Yuffie with Brumal Form and not being able to hit Yuffie with Brumal Form, I think that Yuffie can probably kill me before her Brumal Form wears off. Um, so, it might behoove me to be fairly accurate. For people that I'm not you know, thinking about evasion being able to counter me. Maybe I'm thinking more about building for a higher crit rate, higher crit damage. Maybe I'm thinking about uh, already having kind of a crit build around this, not really leaning into that with my equipment, and instead going with something like the Thornlet, so that all of his moves basically now also lower agility, which can be pretty powerful, and it gives him additional uh, 20% base uh, defense penetration, which is just going to make his whole kit better. So, like, there are a lot of ways that you could, um, I, like, a, lo a lot of the accessories, a lot of the things that I actually want to equip to this guy are accessories. And so much to the point that I actually, this is one character that I really like building cloth armor TMRs for. Like, his TMR is pretty good, although it can be a little problematic AI-wise. You, you really have to set up for it sometimes, but whatever. Um, and it can be hard to work that into his buff rotation. And that might be a problem with a lot of these things, but you'll often find if you are trying to build for defense, then you'll do a lot better with a like a cloth armor TMR that's being built for defense, then you're definitely going to with the Moogle Cloak. And I know that's not a huge difference. And <clears throat> once again, I think really the thing that is impossible to replicate on Sephiroth without the Moogle Cloak is the 10 AoE resistance. So if you're if you're building a party that has a lot of other sources, maybe from vision cards, etc., of AoE resistance, and you're really going for that, then the Moogle Cloak is really your only option for that. And that I think that's the niche that I was searching for in the previous video. Boy, it feels kind of small, but uh, it's there. It does exist. It is not non-existent, as I claimed. I'd really like to hear your opinions, though, on this particular take. Um, I have unlisted the previous video. If you do want to watch it, if you are curious about my much, much hotter take on this piece of equipment, um, now that you know its flaws, because it's a lot longer than this take, for one, so, uh, you know... There's a lot more that I said than just the things that I just told you were wrong. But also, I still feel like there's a strong argument for it not necessarily being the way to go. So, like, what is your build philosophy for Sephiroth? Tell me, tell me, like, how you're building him. Are you going for the Moogle Cloak and an accessory TMR? Are you going for the Moogle Cloak and, like... A weapon TMR. Ooh, I haven't even considered that, and that might be a thing. I don't think that Sir O's TMR makes it anymore, and I'm not sure that there are other good physical uh, TMRs uh, for uh, for Katana. But hey, maybe there's somebody out there as like Seymour's TMR is something that's like, no, no, actually, this thing is amazing. Um, that's happy to correct me on that. Or, like, just how are you building your Sephiroth? I'm curious what your plans are. Like, how are you building him now? 
Um, if we have a raid revival in two weeks, which is about when I'm expecting one, um, what would you be building for Sephiroth out of the raid revival stuff? Like, if you could have your pick of all of the raid-specific uh, gear that he could equip, what is the one thing that you would be building for him? That's what I'm curious about. And why is it the Alexandrite ring? <laughs> no, I really do think that the Alexandrite ring is excellent on him. It is probably one of my favorite uh, things that, that... That would be my answer, really. Um, just because it has helped me kind of edge out Yuffie a number of times, and that is just a really unique and very popular threat in the meta right now. So it's interesting to have that. Also, uh, you know, looking at 140 Zazan, 140 Elena, you know, there might be a lot of reasons why... Sephiroth might need that accuracy a lot more than he would need the ability to take maybe one more hit. Maybe. You know what I mean? Am, am I wrong? Like, am I still wrong about this? I don't know. Let me know. But I just thought I should definitely make the correction video uh, before the event is over. I only really had seven days to, like, discuss and think about all of this. I mean, I'm, I suppose I could have looked at the Moogle, Moogle Cloak much, much sooner. But honestly, I wasn't even planning on pulling Sephiroth. So it, it, it was just a non-issue for me. It was a complete non-starter. Um, but I also want to thank the people in the comments of that video. Because a lot of you pointed out things that I just blind spots for me. Like, I just didn't see it. And that's why I appreciate the community. I appreciate the feedback. Um... Recently, I found out that I was pronouncing a couple of names wrong on this channel, and people just don't want to tell me. Like, they aren't going to call me out in the comments about it, and I don't like that necessarily. Like, if you see me make a mistake, if you have a difference of opinion, just post it in the comments. Like, I don't find... That's not offensive. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how we develop as a community and learn from each other. So, I would be very happy to hear your feedback, especially on this episode, because... I don't really know how to think about this anymore. I've been kind of mind-fucked by this a little bit. Um, I still don't think that it's something that I'm super excited about, but at this point, I can see why other people might be excited about it. Anyways, that's, that's my two cents on this. So, I will see you in the next one.